You know, the best way to make sure you're both safe and fast is to have the right chassis set up. Believe me, there's nothing worse than fighting an ill-handling car. The suspension of a modern race car has one simple purpose, control the tires. Making sure the contact patch of each is in maximum contact with the track at all times. In this section, Jay O'Connell, Technical Director for Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing, will explain the basics, starting with camber. Camber is the angle of the tire relative to the vertical. So if it's straight up perpendicular to the road, then it has zero camber. And if it's tilted towards the center line of the car, then that would be negative camber. And if it's tilted away from the center line of the car, that's positive camber. And it turns out that tires give you the most grip when they have a little bit of negative camber. So the key is keeping it on the negative side around the whole lap, but not too negative, but certainly not positive. While the camber angle is set statically with the car on a perfectly flat surface, it's designed to operate on a racetrack that is anything but perfectly flat. Yeah, you want to think about what is the camber going to be in the middle of the turn, and you'd like that to be on the negative side, depending on the tire, maybe one, two, three degrees negative. Um, but for example, on an Indy car, since we're always going to the left, we'll have positive camber on the left front tire, negative camber on the right front tire, so they're both pointed into the turn. When you're actually at four Gs in the middle of the turn, both of them are right about a half degree negative, right at the optimum for grip. But how do you tell when the camber angles are right, and what adjustments can you make to hit that sweet spot? Well, you adjust the camber by looking at the tire temperature profile as it comes in off the racetrack. So if the tire temperatures are saying the inside is a lot hotter than the outside, then you probably have a little too much camber, too much negative camber. And if the tire temperatures are hotter on the outside shoulder than the inside, then you need to put more negative camber in, tilt the tire in more to even out those temperature profiles on the tire. Another key adjustment is caster angle, which affects how stable the car feels as well as how heavy the steering feels. Well, caster angle is a measurement in the front suspension that determines how much self-centering the, the steering and the suspension system will have when you're in a turn. Caster, like on a bicycle, the same, the same terms used on a bicycle, how much angle there is on the head of the bicycle or on the steering axis that goes down into the ground. Another way to think about it is like a shopping cart. Shopping carts, when you push them down the aisle, the wheels all center up, and that's because the wheels have a caster to them or a caster angle to them. Basically, the center of the tire where it touches the ground, as long as that's behind the steering axis, then it self-centers and goes straight. So if you put more caster in, you get more self-centering and you get more steering effort off of center at speed. Now you might think a car should be set up perfectly square with all four wheels pointed straight ahead, but in reality, small adjustments in the toe, in or out, can make quite a difference in how well the car turns into a corner. The toe is looking from the top view is the angle between the tires. So if the front, if the tires are towed in, it's just like your, your, your feet being towed in, being, uh, being pigeon towed. And then if you tow the wheels out, it's your, 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 the front of the tires are further apart than the back of the tires are towed out. And the tires are much more sensitive to tow than they are to camber. So it's important to get the tow close to zero uh, in, in the front and the rear to minimize the drag from the tires. So what's the ideal setup? Well, normally you'd set the front toe a little bit of toe out. And that makes the car roll nice and freely and it enters the corners a little bit more easily because you don't, if you toe in the front, then you have to fight the steering across center before you turn, before you turn in. And then on the rear, you would set a little bit of toe in because that's, you need that in the back for stability, especially when you're putting power down. If you put toe out in the back, the car spins quite easily and is, can be quite tricky to drive. And then there's the little pesky issue of bump steer, where the toe changes as the suspension moves up and down. Bump steer is a, a great topic because it relates back to the toe we just talked about. Bump steer means that the wheels steer as they go up and down or hit a bump. Now, ideally, you don't want any bump steer, uh, such that when you hit a bump, the wheel just tracks up and down and doesn't affect the steering wheel at all. Uh, especially at the rear, if there's any bump steer at the rear, the car will start to maneuver over bumps as if it's a hook and ladder truck when the guy in the back is doing his own thing. And that's the, the worst case for a driver. If the back of the car is unpredictable and moving around on its own, that gives the driver a very bad feeling about what's happening. So bump steer is very critical at the back and fairly critical at the front. 
And if anything, we try and set up the bump steer so it's a little bit towards the stability direction, which means a little bit of understeer on a bump as opposed to oversteer. Now we get to some trickier stuff, Ackerman, which is the ability of the steering to compensate for the fact that the inside front tire actually carves a tighter radius through a turn than the outside front tire. Ackerman is another aspect of steering that determines how the toe is changing from the straight ahead position to the middle of the turn position. If you have a lot of Ackerman, the inside tire turns a lot faster than the outside tire so that both tires stay on what would be the optimum line for the least amount of scrub. And this is how most street cars are set up, so when you're maneuvering in out of parking spaces and the parking lots, you don't burn the tires off the car. Whereas in a race car, you might want to have some Ackerman or some anti-Ackerman where the inside wheel turns less than the outside wheel if you're trying to get more grip out of a particular set of tires. So we do use Ackerman depending on the course to get a little more grip out of the front tires.